Have you ever tried easing in a neckline for a knit top or a t-shirt and it ended up wrinkly, especially all through here? I'm gonna show you a really easy way to ease in a neckline that turns out perfect every time. Here's my knit top and I've already put little notches where the center front is. I'm just gonna give you a dark line so you can see a little bit better. I put little notches for myself while I'm sewing, but there's the center front and the center back. Okay, now what if you already have the top and the pattern isn't working out right or you're just designing your own neckline, how do you know how wide this neckband should be? Well, here's one, if you look closely, there's my neckline without stretching at all and here's my neckband, that is way too long. So the ideal neckband, you should, I usually lay my shirt in half like that so there's the front and the back without stretching and just measure that neckline. Looks like it's about 11 and a half. Take away at least one inch. Quite often I take away two inches because it depends how stretchy your fabric is. This fabric has a lot of stretch. So here's a neckband that I've already finished. And that's just about two inches shy of the opening without stretching anything. If I were to stretch that, it fits fine. Okay, that's all well and said, but what happens when you wanna ease it? How do you get rid of those wrinkles up at your shoulder? Here's the center back seam. I've already, you know, sewed this together for you. And here's the center front of the neck band. With right sides together, I'm gonna start at the back. This is the back. <laughs> it's a lot of pink going on here. Make sure this is the back. There's the back. And I'm just gonna stick a pin in the back. I usually put my pins this way because then I take them out as I go. If I go this way, the fabric can adjust and I want it to stay right there. That's the center back. All right, and now let's go all the way up to the center front. And I know what you're thinking. You're just gonna quarter this and it's gonna be fine. Well, that's kind of true, but there's still another trick to this. So here's my back and my front. I'm just gonna kind of stretch that. And to be honest with you, I use my teeth when I'm at home, but I'll, I'll spare you from that. And what I've done is I've just kind of held this stretch it and kind of figure out where the quarter is, like that. And I'm just gonna touch there and put a pin. Now this is just going to be a suggestion. It's not written in stone like the front and the back. It just gives me a guide that both sides will lay evenly. Otherwise, especially if you have a V-neck, one side will be higher than the other. So here we go. Do the same thing to this side. Make sure your shoulder seams line up and I'm just gonna pin Put a pin about in the same spot, so it looks like it's about right here. Again, it's really easy if you just grab it with your teeth. All right, now, if I were to pin that all the way around and just stitch, there is a section that will be very puckery. So where's that section? The shoulder seam. From your shoulder seam to at least an inch to the back and usually two to three inches to the front. I want both of these pieces to fabric, these fabric, the ribbing and the fabric to be equal. So there's one and there's one. So between here and here is where I will put one pin sideways. That reminds me that between this section right here, I will not be easing the fabric. Actually, I'm gonna kind of ease it around the back so you can kind of see. There's the back. This part can stretch. Then we'll go back over here. We're gonna stretch the back a little bit. So that's the basics of this. So although you're quartering it, you do not want to stretch between the shoulder seam from one inch to the back. So basically, you're stretching the ribbing from here to here, maybe a little bit further, and you're leaving at least this section unstretched. Okay, back to the shirt here. So here's my center front. So I'm gonna be stretching that much. You can see that I'm easing that much of the top into the ribbing, and same with this side. And now we're just gonna sew. And I, I usually start from the center back because remember I said you're easing that section in the center back, so when you're ending, you can stretch the ribbing just a little bit. Now, there's different kinds of stitches you can use for this. If you're using a serger, just run it through the serger. I'm gonna choose a zigzag stitch, and I'm going to choose a width that is the smallest you can get which is like a 0.5. Why am I doing that? So when your neckline stretches, your stitch won't stretch out. All right, and you can see this going. 
And one more tip, if you notice, I'm gonna change the length here to a 2.0. Did you notice how little those stitches were? Sometimes the polyester knits will not work well with that. So do use a longer length. And the last thing is make sure you're using a, a micro, it's like a micro or a stretch needle. Okay, I told myself I'm not stretching right there. And what I like to do is just stop. Looks like I lost my pin in the center front, but that's why I have those notches. So I'm gonna just, see that notch like this? So I can take that whole piece and stretch that ribbing to fit. It takes a little bit of practice, but it'll make a big difference. I'm just gonna go down to the center. I think you're getting the idea. So it's like stretch, stop, stretch, and stop. So let's see how that looks. So by not stretching around the shoulder, there are no puckers there. That's excellent. And so then when you get down to the front, that's where all the stretching was. And that's the part that would stretch out anyways. Look at this guy. If you wanna do your own styling, this is nine inches times two, so that's 18 inches wide, but it's put in the exact same way as I did here. That's how easy it is to ease in a knit collar.